everyone, it's Rob with ARD Tuning, and we're out in the service shop today. We're going to rebuild our TDO4 HL15G from our Volvo 850. Now, this rebuild is specific to this TDO4 HL family of turbos, but it will actually cover forward to the TDO4 L14T and go as far back as the TDO4 H13C. So, we're going to cover teardown, rebuilding, and upgrade options. All right, tools necessary for the job are going to be snap ring pliers with a 90 degree bent on them straight snap ring pliers. We're going to use some needle nose pliers, 3 8 12 millimeter wrench, uh, inch pound torque wrench. Need a couple of hammers, about a hammer and a plastic hammer. We're going to also use a heat gun in some cases, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and a quarter drive ratchet, 10 and 12 millimeter wrenches, a couple of flat blades, and a pick. As far as chemicals, we're going to use a little bit of red Loctite, some assembly lube for our bearings, and some light lubricant for our O-rings. To perform our rebuild, we're going to need a super back rebuild kit which includes our O-rings, our thrust surfaces, our bearings, our gasket, the compressor nut, and our turbine and compressor piston rings. And all these parts are available at ARDTuning.com. A unique feature to our Superback Rebuild Kit is the turbine piston ring, which features a step gap design, which reduces oil migration from the turbo, as opposed to the factory style butt-ended piston ring. If you're looking to upgrade your 15G, our Billet 15G compressor wheel will provide more efficient power and higher output as compared to the OEM cast wheel. To go even further, you can use our 19T conversion wheel to convert the turbo up to the Superback style 19T. And for additional flow and better stability boost at redline, you can use our 11 blade turbine. The Mitsubishi TDO4 HL Turbo came in two styles, flatback and superback. The flatback style, shown left, features a flat seal plate and matching flat compressor wheel. On the right is the Superback style seal plate and Superback style compressor wheel. Anytime we upgrade from a flatback style turbo into a larger Superback style turbo, we'll need to use the proper seal plate assembly and matching compressor wheel. If you do decide to upgrade to our Superback 19T conversion wheel, you'll need to get a matching 19T compressor cover. Our 19T compressor cover matches our wheel and is a direct bolt up to the TDO4 HL turbo and includes an upgraded CBV with 10 pound spring and stronger diaphragm. All right, to rebuild our TDO4, we're going to start by taking off our wastegate. We need a pair of pliers to go ahead and remove our wastegate pin. And slide the wastegate up off of the wastegate rod. Then let's rotate the turbo around. And we're going to take off our two 12 millimeter bolts. And that takes our wastegate off. All right, now we're going to take off our compressor housing. And to do that, we want to flip it up, grab our snap ring pliers, and get in there and grab hold of the snap ring, and lift it up and release it. All right, let's hold our turbine and compressor sides together and flip it over so the compressor is facing up. Then we're going to take, put a little bit of pressure on the turbine shaft and pull the compressor cover straight up and off. Sure. All right, now it's time to separate the center housing rotating assembly from the turbine. To do that, we'll want to rotate it around. Take off our 10 millimeter with our wrench and our bolt out and pull our clamp off. Sometimes the exhaust housing can be hard to separate from the CHRA. Use a small hammer and hold the CHRA while tapping the exhaust housing until it comes loose. Okay, so now we're going to take off our compressor wheel and our turbine wheel. And to do that, we need a 12 millimeter wrench to go on the turbine side and we'll need an 8 millimeter for the compressor side. Uh, one thing to be advised, certain 15Gs are normal thread, most are reverse thread, which is the case in this one. And once you get it broken loose, you simply spin the nut off, like so. Set that down. Compressor wheel slides off like that. Then to get the turbine out, we're going to have to give it a little bit of a whack. And then our turbine will come right out next to our compressor wheel. Now we'll take off the seal plate assembly using snap ring pliers. Set that down like that. And, with, and then we'll use two screwdrivers to equally pry the center thrust surfaces out. Don't be afraid to use a little bit of force sometimes. They don't always want to come out quite so easily, like that. Our 
O-rings inside, outside, and our thrust surfaces. So we'll start by peeling our O-ring off, then take our center O-ring as well, and peel it off. Don't be afraid if it breaks up on you a little bit. Like that. Then we're going to take off our thrust washer. Like that. And our O-ring and our little gap ring fell down in there, so we're going to grab onto him as well if we can get it. Actually, it just fell out the bottom. That's fine. All right, now we're going to take our CHRA and take our back plate off. In this case, we've already got a little bit of a pry point on it. And we can take that off, and now we're ready for our CHRA cleanup. Okay, so we've got our old CHRA here, and we want to clean it up. As we can see, there's a lot of rust and scale in it, including inside the ports and certainly in the back exhaust cover. Uh, Media Blaster can do a really good job. Ultrasonic cleaning is fine as well, but you want to be careful because you can get a lot of grit from Media Blaster left over in the threaded holes, as well as in the oil ports, and even potentially clogging up the oil feed to the internal bearings. So when you do clean them, make sure that you rinse them thoroughly, thoroughly well. Use an ultrasonic cleaner if you like. Wire brushes and things are fine, but stay away from anything that's going to grind it away or could actually upset the, uh, the actual casting of this one. So here's our clean one all ready to go, and now we're ready for assemble before and after. All right, so now we're going to uh, put together our thrust surfaces, and to do that we need to have our new thrust collar that goes into our oil deflector, just like that. Then our piston ring and then we're going to go ahead and just snap that guy into place by just pushing around the perimeter like that. And then that's going to go into this guy with a little bit of lubrication. And then we just take this with that extended and we push that into here. Until it comes through. Okay, now we're going to do our bearings, thrust surface collars, and thrust assemblies. We're going to start by putting some grease all over our bearing, a little bit of assembly lube. And we can use that on the inside and the outside. And just smooge that all up like that until it's nice and coated with some grease. And drop that guy right into our center housing like that. Boom. Then we're going to take our thrust collar, which is this guy here. And that's going to sit right on top of the bearing assembly like that. And then we're going to take our thrust surface and he's going to sit on there like that so that you have that in there like this. Then we want to take our o-ring with a little bit of lubricant. Drop our o-ring in like this. So then our o-ring's in there all happy. Now we're going to take our thrust surface and make sure that the oil deflector plate sits into the corresponding hole. And this guy needs to go in nice and even as possible. Just use your thumbs, kind of press it in until it drops in like that. And then we're going to take our O-ring along with our snap ring pliers, our snap ring and snap ring pliers. And then we're going to take this guy and drop him into place. Just like that. And make sure your snap ring is seated all the way in. Okay, now we're going to do our piston ring to our turbine. So let's grab our turbine and our piston ring. We want to slide it onto the second groove right there. So put the snap ring on and using your thumbs, press it around the perimeter until you get it to drop into place. Like that. Now we're going to take this guy and we're going to go ahead and put a bearing on it. So we're going to put a little bit of grease on the bearing again, both on the inside and the outside. And then that's going to slide on the end of our turbine shaft, just like that. Then we're going to take our exhaust back plate and put it onto the back of our CHRA. And then we're going to take our turbine wheel and slide it into there all the way through the front. And then we want to press down evenly right there until it snaps to that surface level. 
and now we're ready to put on our compressor wheel. Okay, if we get any grease on the tip of our turbine shaft, let's make sure that we clean that off. You can just use a soft towel and make sure that you get everything off there and get it nice and clean. If you need to use brake clean or an additional cleaner to make sure the threads are there, feel free. All right, now let's go ahead and get our compressor wheel onto our turbine shaft. A lot of times the compressor wheel will slide down, but it won't want to go any further without some heat. So use your heat gun and warm it up. Until it's ready to fall on. Just like that. Now then, you're going to want to line up your turbine wheel with the little green mark there with the ground part of the turbine shaft where the balancing has been done with the green part. So we want the green dot to line up with the balance shaft rotation. Then we're going to put on our nut and we're going to use just a little bit of Loctite onto the shaft just like that and then go ahead and run the nut the rest of the way down all right now we're going to tighten down our compressor shaft nut and we'll need our inch pound torque wrench set at 48 inch pounds and a wrench so we'll go ahead and put the wrench on the turbine shaft like that and we'll put the torque wrench on the compressor nut and remember it's reverse thread and we want to watch that turn until we hit 48. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put our CHRA into our exhaust turbine housing. And we want to mind that there is a pin right here and a corresponding notch right here. We also want to make sure that our turbine spins freely. And we're going to go ahead and drop that in nice and gently, making sure that it nests up, locks in, still rotates. And we're going to take our clamshell clamp and bring that around the top like this with our bolt going through and attaching onto our nut. And we're going to go ahead and tighten that down all the way down until you get it to 8 foot pounds. And we still want to make sure that our wheels spin smooth. Okay, now we need to go ahead and put our O-ring on the outside of the CHRA, and we can simply just pull that up like that. We need to put our snap ring on with the beveled side facing down, and so this guy's going to go on here just like that. And now we've got our compressor cover ready to go on, and again remembering that we've got a little pin here, and these line up with the corresponding hole here, and we're going to drop that guy in place after we put a little bit of lubricant on it. And then we'll go ahead and drop this on place nice. Okay, so we want to make sure our compressor cover is seated all the way down into it. So take your thumbs on this and pull into the back side of the CHRA until you can feel it lock into place. Then we want to hold it together, flip it over, holding the turbine down with our snap ring in place, ready to go in. Make sure that we're fully seated from our CHRA to our compressor cover. Then utilize our snap ring pliers here. Grab hold of our snap ring, squeeze it in, and make sure it drops all the way down into the groove on both the forward side and the reverse side. All right, our next step is going to take our wastegate to control our wastegate arm. So we'll rotate the turbo back around, take our new bolts, our new wastegate housing, our wastegate actuator right at the neck. And we're going to want to rotate this over. This is our ARD tuning wastegate. Uh, so it's already set at the right pretension. We just need to break the nut free like this and adjust it until it sits right on top of the pin. Actually, I'm going to back that up one turn. And there we go. I can take and lock this down. Take our clip, and our clip goes in like this, and we're done.
We got ourselves a turbo. Make sure that your compressor side still spins free without any drag. And you are all set. Now since we used a brand new turbine wheel and a brand new compressor wheel and matched them together, we know that our balance is in spec. But if you were going to reuse your original turbine wheel or your original compressor wheel, you'd want to send it off to a professional turbo balancer to make sure that you get the best longevity from your turbo. Aside from that, as you can see, it takes a few special tools and you can do the rebuild right in your own garage with an amazing upgrade for both power, performance, and great longevity. Refrigerator, whatever you need. Squirrel yeah. army. Get in the back, guys. We're going on a mission. Ha, ha, ha.